In this video, we are going to learn how to build complex full height CSS grid layouts with scrollable areas, something that will be very useful when building the UI of apps like a chat, a cloud file manager, or a code playground. For this CSS exercise, we will have as a result this complex full height grid layout composed with different nested scrollable areas without the browser scroll bar if any content has an overflow. This exercise will help you master your CSS grid skills. Before continuing watching the video, it's very important that you are familiar with the following concepts. For this example, you can get the link of the source code on the description. Let's start with an empty HTML page and CSS style sheet. Inside the CSS file, we are going to apply the CSS resets to set the default browser margin and padding to zero. After that, we need to apply a 100% height to the HTML and body tags for making our website full height. Also, we will add a gray color to visualize on the browser that really is displaying full height. Now we're going to add a main container div with any background color. As you can see, it's invisible because it doesn't have content. Let's add some text to make it visible. Now the div appears with the height of the text, so we need also to define it as a full height container, adding the 100% height CSS role. Let's continue by adding two divs as rows with a background color. Then let's define the main container display as a grid and set the height of each row with grid template rows, making each one to fit the same space. Also, we will create a test height CSS class to simulate a container with a big height for creating a vertical overflow. To test it, we will add a div with a test height CSS class inside of each row. And if we take a look at the web page, it will appear the vertical browser scroll bar. To prevent this behavior and make each row scrollable, we will add an overflow auto inside each one. Now it's working as expected. At this point, we have covered the basic technique to create scrollable areas with CSS grid. So it's very important to take the following into account. The main container div must have a defined height. It can be in pixels, percentage, viewport units, etc. After that, the heights of the child divs must be defined with the grid template rows. Using the grid fraction units, or again, pixels, percentage, etc. Finally, we can apply the CSS rule overflow auto to each child div to make them scrollable, preventing the browser scroll bar to appear. Notice also that if we add a padding inside each row, the row heights keep the same and the scrolls are not affected. Remember also to apply the box sizing rule inside the CSS resets to do not alter the height and width of a container when a padding is applied. Now let's create some nested scrollable areas inside each row. We will remove the applied padding and replace the test height div with two rows inside row 1 and row 2. Let's apply to each one any background color. Then we're going to add a display grid to row 1, which is now the container of row 11 one and row 12. And then define the inner row size with the grid template rows rule. In this case, row 12 will be bigger than row 11. Let's do the same for row 2, that is now the container of row 21 and row 22. Perfect, it's working. Now let's test again the rows overflow, adding the div with the test height class inside of each nested row from row 1.
If we check the browser, the overflow auto is working, but at the level of the container that is row one. Let's try the same on row two. And we will also have that overflow auto is only working at the level of the containers. So let's add an overflow auto inside each nested row to make them scrubble. Notice that if we want that the overflow auto rule works in a nested row, its parent container must also have an overflow auto. Otherwise, the nested overflow can be controlled. As next thing, let's make our grid a little bit more complex by adding a second column. So inside the main container div, let's add the grid template column rule, making the first column wider than the second. Then let's move the row one inside the column one div and create another div for the column two. Then we need to declare the column one class with a display grid and a row template for two rows of the same size and a column two class with a display grid. If we check the browser, we will have an uncontrolled overflow caused by the first column. So to fix that, we need to declare an overflow auto inside the column one class, which again is working as expected. Inside column 2, we will create a rows template to simulate a kind of header, content, and footer. Then we will add three row divs inside the container column 2 with any background color. Then in the middle row of column 2, we're going to create a nested scrollable area. Let's start by adding the row for one with a padding. and give it a full height by setting a display grid in its parent and a grid template row of one fraction. Then let's create a div container inside row for one to simulate a kind of text editor layout with two divs inside, one for the toolbar and the second for the content area. We will apply a display grid and play rows to give the height of the toolbar and content divs. And then we will apply any background color to each one for visualizing them on the browser. Finally, we will apply an overflow auto to the content div and add a test height div inside the content to check if the overflow is controlled. If we check the browser, it's not working, so to fix that, we need to go from the content div to each one of its ancestors to check if all of them have an overflow auto. So the next ancestor is the text editor div, so let's apply an overflow auto. It is still not working because the next ancestor is row for one that doesn't have an overflow out. So let's also add it. The problem persists and it's because also the next ancestor is row four, which also doesn't have an overflow out. Let's add it. And finally, the last ancestor is column two. Let's also add an overflow out. Perfect, we have our nested grid working. For concluding, we need to have always into consideration the following to create full height bricks with scrollable areas without problems. We need to make sure that the main container that will host all the grid and subgrids has a defined height can be in pixels, percentage, or any browser size unit. The rows and columns widths and heights must be defined with the CSS rules, grid template rows, and grid template columns for a correct templating. Finally, if we have many nested grids and any child contains a scrollable area, you need to make sure that it and its ancestors 
have an overflow auto, otherwise we will have an uncontrolled overflow. I hope you have enjoyed this CSS exercise. You have any questions, feel free to leave your comments below this video. Don't forget also to hit the like button and to subscribe if you want to receive more content like this. Thanks for watching, see you next time.